everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today we're going to be having a discussion of filing the serial numbers off your fanfic to publish as original fiction. This question was asked in the comments of my last fanfic themed video, and I thought it was a really good question. I certainly have feelings about this. I think most of us who come from fandom and fanfic have feelings about this. And I'll say that mine are complex, they're nuanced, and they have definitely kind of shifted and changed over time. Though ultimately I do think it's kind of a case-by-case -case basis thing. But I know what some of you are asking. What the heck are you talking about? What does filing the serial numbers off mean? So this is a very inter-community thing. It's known in the fanfic world. And when we say filing the serial numbers off, what we mean is taking all the elements of something that started as fanfiction, that was written as fanfiction for an existing media property, and changing all the things that specifically tie it to the fandom, filing the serial numbers off, and then publishing it as something original. The most famous example of this is Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey started out as a Twilight fanfiction, and it got really popular, and E.L. James basically changed all of the names and anything that kind of connected it specifically to Twilight and republished it, self-published it as Fifty Shades of Grey, and we know how that turned out for her. <laughs> Another really good example is After by Anna Todd, which started out and is still on Wattpad as an RPF, real person fan fiction, featuring Harry Styles of One Direction and an original uh, fiction character romance with him. When this took off and was acquired by Simon & Schuster, the character of Harry Styles was changed to Harden. There are other examples that you can definitely find, but those two are the most recent and most famous. Now, why is filing the serial numbers off frowned upon in fandom? It's definitely considered taboo. It's something that many of us sneer at. And the big reason is, is that there is kind of an intra inter community norm within fandoms and fanfiction that you should never make money off of your fanfiction because fanfiction is fair use and it exists in kind of this magical limbo space where it is fair use because you're creating transformative works and you're not profiting off of someone else's intellectual property. It's kind of a really critical hinge of fanfic that you don't charge for it because that is not legal. Fan art gets into a really weird, hinky legal space, but this, this conversation is about fanfic. Um, and so it's just baked into the community norms of fandom that you don't make money off of your fanfiction. There's also all sorts of stuff about breaking the fourth wall, meaning keeping fandom stuff private, which filing the serial numbers off also does. I mean, one huge thing about Fifty Shades of Grey becoming what it did is that it really blew the lid off of, oh, there's this whole subculture within fan fiction, Twilight fan fiction. Of course, we all knew it was there, but all of a sudden everyone else knew that, oh, people are writing alternate universe fix where he's into BDSM and it became Fifty Shades. So it's just something that generally we all kind of raise our eyebrow on. The other reason that filing the serial numbers off can definitely be taboo, whether you're in fandom or not in fandom, is that it's definitely seen as kind of lazy writing in the sense that if you know that something started as fan fiction, then you know that the writer had a lot of the work done for them in the sense that they were basing what they've come up with off of something that already existed. Though I do have feelings about this, but the point is many people have this misconception. Or not a misconception, sometimes it's correct, but there's this idea that filing the serial numbers off something that started as fan fiction is lazy, that you're not doing the work to create original fiction. So now we're gonna get into my feelings about this, the discussion part, and I'm gonna start with a real shocker. Um, I am in support of Fifty Shades of Grey, which is so weird to say. Um, I don't like Fifty Shades of Grey. It is not to my personal taste. The writing is not to my personal taste. Uh, I don't think it's the best work in the world. I think there are a lot of bad things about it, uh, but I also don't believe in shaming people who like it. But specific to just this conversation, I think it has every right to exist, as it exists, as Fifty Shades of Grey, as original fiction, or just original fiction. No qualifiers, no quote marks. And that is because Fifty Shades of Grey falls into this space where my exceptions lie, where I go, you know, I support this. And that is 
The original fan fiction was an AU, an alternate universe fiction. Plus, I want to talk about character archetypes. So let's start with character archetypes because I think that this is more kind of broadly universal. We're going to talk about alternate universe fics or really any fic where you're writing in a setting or genre that isn't from the original fandom kind of pings this exception. But the thing with character archetypes is that character archetypes exist. Ultimately, you can boil most characters down to famous archetypes, big archetypes. So that is to say that there are just certain characters who fall into these archetypes, like the sage mentor, the wise mentor, the stubborn hero, the bad boy. You, you can think of a lot of them. And I think that in fandom especially, I think the whole reason fandoms develop is because of great characters, most often, sometimes great world building. And I think the people in fandom gravitate towards specific character archetypes, and these form the basis of the characters that they write the most, especially the POV characters they write the most, as well as what they ship, and kind of the ships that people like to explore. And there are phenomenons in fandom of fanon versions of characters where the fandom collectively, sometimes or often, uh, based on one kind of seminal fic, decide on a fanon interpretation of the character and the characters really morph into these different executions of the characters that we know and love from the source material. And it's because they're character archetypes and there are things that you can do in exploring those characters in your own fiction that of course you have to do your own original work on a certain level in fanfic because you're not regurgitating the exact story that's already been done. You're springing off of it. So what I'm meaning to say is that fanfic writers do more original work when it comes to characters than one thinks they do kind of on a surface level. I've said in previous videos that I genuinely feel that fanfic writers tend to develop real strength in the area of character development because they have to inherently understand the characters in their favorite properties and who they are and what makes them tick, what forms the backbone of them as a character in many cases character archetypes. And then they have to put their own spin on it. They have to both work to reflect characters that are recognizable to fans of the property or come up with their own interpretations and spin on them that are still acceptable within fandom and feel organic, but are the author's own. So that is to say, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes when someone is writing fan fiction, the characters that they're writing take on a life of their own and they really do expand beyond the exact characters in the source material. And I actually think Fifty Shades of Grey kind of falls into this territory, as do many fics that work as original fiction which, once the serial numbers are filed off. But also let's talk about the whole alternate universe thing. So the original fanfic from which Fifty Shades of Grey was born was set in an alternate universe. Alternate universe fanfiction is when the fanfic writer takes their favorite characters, archetypes, and some of the situational aspects of the fandom. In many, many cases, it's going to be romance dynamics, and they transplant it into a completely new setting usually, most often, removing whatever the essential ingredient of the original fandom is. You've probably heard of coffee shop AUs. If you haven't, you're welcome. Uh, this is actually a really kind of famous fanfic trope uh, where people love to take their favorite characters, ships, and transplant them to an AU where they work in a coffee shop and cute romantic things happen. Um, in Harry Potter, because I was on Harry Potter fandom, Anything where you removed magic from the universe was a you. I wrote a couple of those. I know people who really liked them. It was the idea of playing with the characters that you love and the pairings that you love in a world outside of the world from which the fandom stems. And the thing is, when you're writing AU fanfiction or anything of the sort, um, I have a friend who wrote a historical AU of something that is not a historical fandom. And when she told me about it, I was like, that's original fiction. The the only like, you base it off of the romantic dynamic of these two characters that you ship, but everything else about it is completely original. And that's the kind of case where I think file the damn serial numbers off because it doesn't matter that the original inspiration was fanfic and shipping. You did all of the work and the world building work to create something original. And at a certain point, you're just writing character archetypes 
they're, they don't have to necessarily be the exact characters from the fandom. And in fact, part of filing serial numbers off can be to make those characters stand independently apart on their own. But so often when you write AU, that happens anyway, because when you change the rules of your world, it changes the characters. So with Fifty Shades, she had already removed all of the supernatural elements from the story. Um, she changed the city setting. She aged up the characters. She added a college setting. It was a different story. It was no longer Twilight, even if they had the same names. So I think filing off those serial numbers and making them Anastasia Steele and Christian Grey and doing everything that she did makes complete sense. Get your coin. <laughs> like, good job. Um, and it ultimately doesn't matter that I don't personally care for Fifty Shades of Grey, but yeah, I do support the author's right to do what she did. Um, and it's it's kind of incidental that it started off as Twilight fanfiction, because I do think that it stands on its own. So ultimately, I think that's the important question to ask. Does what you have stand on its own? How much inspiration did you take from the original thing? Because there's fanfic that is straight up derivative of the source material, and that's okay, by the way, if you're playing in the fanfic paddling pool. And there's fanfic that is just way more transformative. And when your fanfic is super transformative at a certain point, you can realize I'm basically writing original fiction. And when you, you cross that line, then it is a time where I'm like, yeah, if you think it can stand on its own two feet as an original work, do it. But I do want to say that it is really rocky ground because I think in cases where you really don't make many changes at all, especially if you're hewing very closely to the special sauce of your fandom, whatever that is. So if you're in Marvel fandom, if whatever you've written still has all the superheroes and all the same powers and whatnot, or if it is Harry Potter, so you're keeping the magic, if it's Twilight, so you're keeping the vampires and so on and so on and so on, you can't necessarily file the serial numbers off everything because then it's just like, oh, Look at that carbon copy of Twilight you have where you just change the names. Look at that sad Harry Potter knockoff where they have different names, but I'm pretty sure this is this is fan fiction. And if you are wanted, wanting to make the jump, you do need to avoid that. And I've made videos before kind of cautioning writers. I have a video about retellings where I caution writers that while existing media properties can inspire original fiction, there is a tipping point and it's kind of a case by case basis thing where it's like something can just be too derivative. There's not, nothing original enough about it for it to justify it being original fiction. So it's very murky. Uh, it, it, there's a fine line. It really is case by case. So I hyper focused on Fifty Shades and I haven't really talked about After. I actually think After is a great example where I think filing the serial numbers off was the best idea, just in the sense that and I don't mean to spark any fanfic debates, fandom debates. <laughs> but when you get into the realm of RPF, which is real person fiction, it gets really, really sticky because you're basically writing fiction based off of a real person, except you don't know that real person. And so it's automatically already fiction. I mean, it's in the title, real person fiction, but I actually think it's safer and more respectful to all parties involved to file the serial numbers off something like that. I think after works much better when you rename Harry Styles as Harden. I am not a 1D fan, but I have heard from 1D fans that Harden is nothing like Harry Styles. And I'm like, so it was original fiction from the jump. So I think that's a wonderful case where filing the serial numbers off also was a really good idea. And then briefly, I do want to speak to the unfortunate misconceptions this can lead to, which is this idea that anyone who once started in fanfiction automatically only is writing derivative works and they must have filed the serial numbers off on their fic. And really, this is just my way of saying the mortal instruments is not a case of filing the serial numbers off fanfic. The, I hear this urban legend all the time and it, I just find it really annoying. Now it is true that Cassie mined a few key details, specifically character details, character archetypes from her Harry Potter fan fiction. And famously, there's one specific scene that was in the Draco trilogy. But if you've read the Draco trilogy and you've read the Mortal Instruments, they're not the same. And so it really annoys me when people say that. I'm like, a fanfic writer has every right 
to rehash their own work in future original works because it's their own original work and I don't think that makes it filing the serial numbers off. So this is just my little like PSA that the Myrtle Insurance is not an example of this. And I saw it on the fan lore, like the wiki article, and it really bugged me because it's not. Um, so I, I think that it's kind of, you have to be real careful, but this, this leads back to the whole taboo of it. The people do look down on cases where someone has filed the serial numbers off. And I think in some cases it's just a real shame because as I mentioned, Many fanfic writers are, whether they know it or not, doing all the work that you would need to do to write original fiction in their fanfiction. And often it's a sign that they are ready to make the jump to writing original fiction because they're essentially just playing with character archetypes and romance archetypes and transplanting them into totally new settings. So if you are a fanfic writer and you're doing that, hint, hint, <laughs> probably means you're ready. And it doesn't necessarily mean you should file the serial numbers off something you've already written. It might just mean, hey, you're ready to make the jump and start writing some original fiction. Uh, but if you are thinking of filing the serial numbers off your fic, do some soul searching, really think about how much the work stands apart from the original. Are you exploring character archetypes or are you just copying exact characters? You do need to be careful because there's nothing more annoying than reading a book and you're like, I think this started out as XX fic. And sometimes you're right. <laughs> You'll read a book. I've done, I've read this from like professionally published authors where I'm like, I know what you ship. It takes all sorts, but <laughs> that is kind of my feelings on filing the serial numbers off fan fiction. Some of you viewers may very well have super different views from mine, and I think we should discuss it in the comments. Like, what do you think about this whole phenomenon, whether you're new to it or not? Does it impact your opinion of something if you find out that it started out as a fanfic? Do you support authors who want to do this, think that they should never do it? Let's jump off down below in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and I will make more fanfic -y content. The inspiration for this topic actually came from my last video about fanfic, how to go from fanfic to pro, and I want to thank the commenter Air Rekka for asking me this question, which prompted me to think about it and go, hey, I could make a whole video on this. So here we are. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, guys, happy writing.